Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. Don't forget to subscribe. And today in what could possibly go wrong news, let's nuke the moon. Because quite frankly, <laughs> I think that's where we may actually be heading. Not that we necessarily want to, but here we are. Because China, Russia, and the United States are now in a race to develop nuclear reactors on the moon. Now, Emily Walsh of IEEE had a really good write-up on this, and I'm going to be linking her article uh, basically in my SoundCloud and YouTube as well, because quite frankly, I think everybody should read this. But here's what's going on. If you didn't know, back in May, China and Russia entered into an agreement to work together to complete a lunar reactor by 2036. So naturally, in response, NASA's interim chief and also MTV's real-world Boston alumni, Sean Duffy, announced this past August that the United States would fast track its uh, lunar nuclear re uh, reactor power program to have one ready by 2030. That's less than five years from now. So according to Katie Duffy, a uh, nuclear engineer and director of the Advanced Reactor Fuel Cycles Laboratory at the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, so she quite frankly knows what she's talking about, and I quote, there are really good reasons to do this. There's a, and I quote, a growing interest in having a more sustained presence of humans on the moon for scientific discovery. Resources like helium-3, which can serve as a fusion fuel, might be part of the appeal. NASA is planning to build this kind of lunar exploration base through its Artemis program, and China and Russia are working together to build one called International uh, Lunar Research Station. Any such lunar base would absolutely need nuclear power. Renewables alone are too intermittent to meet energy needs of life on the moon. Plus, the cost of getting these things into space scales by mass, so the unmatched energy and density of uh, uranium fission is our greatest opportunity, end quote. Huff, for the record, also previously served as Assistant Secretary for Nuclear Energy at the Department of Energy here in the United States. That's one of many answers that she gives essentially to IEEE's Emily Waltz. And so, like I said, I'm going to link that article. But I think this is a huge issue. Now, she went on to say that the radiation fallout, if we do accidentally have some kind of reactor breach, aka what if an asteroid hits the moon and hits one of these things. But nevertheless, why are we doing this so fast? And that, I think, is one of the issues that we've got. Because if we are in kind of like a second space race, that's going to be a bit of an issue here because there's a lot of things that we have to do here on Earth as well and as it was in the 1960s. But that said, we have political issues. We've got societal issues. We have a whole bunch of different things. And so to start focusing energy and resources on doing this, I understand competitors are doing it too, but maybe everybody just takes a step back or maybe we somehow become collaborative. I know there are adversaries, but... I just don't want to have anything happen to the moon, such as, let's say, nuking it or getting it off its orbit or maybe irradiating anybody that lands on the moon in the future. So I think this is something that we really need to step back, take a really good look at, assess if this is something that we should be doing at a very fast pace. I don't necessarily have a problem with a nuclear reactor or reactors on the moon, providing we're doing it right. Moving fast and breaking things when we're talking about nuclear energy literally outside of the planet is probably something that we don't want to rush into simply to say that we got there first. You know, this is not the same as a rocket, you know, going up and having multiple attempts. This is an actual nuclear reactor. And the last thing we need to do is turn the moon into Chernobyl. So here we are. I'll leave it at that, but I thought that was your interesting news of the day. And again, go read Emily Walsh's article. It's long, but it's well worth the read. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please, please, please attempt to stay private, informed, secure, and not irradiated. Take care.